Most of us are familiar with the goldenrod plant. They are, as the name suggests, a mass of small golden flowers towards the top of a green stalky plant and are most commonly seen in open fields. In the late fall and winter months, the flowers, leaves, and stalk all turn brown. Did you ever see what looks like a ball towards the top of their stalk, something called a gall, and wonder how it got there and why? In our next lab, we will explore those questions and the broader topic of interactions and relationships in ecosystems. The goldenrod mystery begins with a small goldenrod gall fly who spends all of its two-week lifespan on and around a single goldenrod plant. After two goldenrod flies mate, the female injects her fertilized eggs into the stem of the goldenrod plant. The gall fly larvae will hatch in about 10 days and begin eating the inside of the stem. Their saliva contains a chemical that causes the plant to grow abnormally around them and form the gall. When the gall is about the size of a golf ball, they'll stop eating and the gall will stop growing. The larvae will then make a tunnel to the outer edge of the gall and then return to the center as fall sets in. In the spring, the fly larvae emerges from its pupa stage as an adult fly. The fly makes its way through the tunnel to the outer shell where it makes an escape hole and leaves the gall. It finds a new goldenrod plant nearby, a new mate, and the cycle begins all over again. The larvae are vulnerable to several predators from late fall through early spring. Those predators include birds like the downy woodpecker, a Carolina chickadee, a beetle, and two species of parasitic wasps. Our lab will involve three phases. In the first phase, each lab team will conduct online research to examine hypotheses about the interactions between herbivores and plants, as well as herbivores and their predators in the goldenrod community. Each team will consider questions like, do plants with different attributes differ in their susceptibility to attack by herbivores? And do herbivores act as parasites or mutualists when they feed on plants? In the second phase, lab teams will choose one of three hypotheses to test, that the gall fly's presence has a positive, neutral, or negative effect on the goldenrod plant. Each team will also develop their own written field and lab methods to test that hypothesis. The class will discuss the pros and cons of each team's methods and agree on a single set of methods, which will be used by all teams to test their hypothesis. The third phase will be a field trip, literally, where you'll be able to observe goldenrod plants in their natural environment. Each lab team will be required to collect its own data and gall samples using the methodology agreed to in the earlier session. Your team will analyze the data collected, plant color, health, height, etc., and dissect the gall sample you collected to test your hypothesis and decide if the effect the galls have on the plants is positive, neutral, or negative. Each lab team will summarize their findings for the class in a brief presentation using whatever presentation method you choose.